So the Dong Wei begins with Ha Ren, a 23-year-old guy fresh out of university, on the hunt for a job. Excited to visit his dream company, he finds it closed and decides to take a nap on a bench. As the afternoon rolls on, something totally unexpected happens. A cute short-haired girl named Lily Liu wakes him up. She's got a flyer and needs directions. Now here's the fun part. When Ha Ren checks out the map in the flyer, guess what? The address Lily is looking for is none other than his own house. Turns out, his parents gave him this house in the outskirts of town. And they even rent out a room at a really cheap price. So he tells Lily that this is the house she's been looking for and she's thrilled. Why? Because she's planning to rent that very room. Now they get to meet in person. Shortly after, Hao Ren and Lily hopped on a bus to reach his house. But here's where things get interesting. At that time, Lily starts feeling scared, thinking Hao Ren might be tricking her, like those bad guys from TV kidnapping stories. However, Hao Ren finds it amusing, thinking she's a strange girl. When they reach the nearest bus stop to Hao Ren's place, they decide to walk the rest of the way. And guess what? Lily's suitcase starts falling apart. Haha, <laughs> talk about bad luck. Then she tries to fix it by kicking it, but that only makes it worse. Ha Ren, being the nice guy he is, offers to help and picks up the suitcase. But guess what? It's super heavy, and he can't even lift it. At that time, he's amazed that this petit girl can carry such a massive load. Eventually, Lily decides to carry it on her shoulders like a champ. And there goes Ha Ren, totally surprised by this powerhouse of a girl who's going to rent a room in his house. Then as Ha Ren and Lily were on their way to his house, guess what? Out of nowhere. A vampire girl named Vivian Ansetta showed up. Talk about unexpected. Lily was all like, Ha Ren, run away. Take cover. But this dude was like, no way. I've got to protect you. A real hero, ha? Huh? But Lily was having none of it and pushed him out of harm's way. She's one tough cookie. And here's where things get even wilder. At that time, Lily transformed into a dog demon with long white hair. How cool is that? It was a showdown between her and Vivian. They were duking it out, and Vivian thought Lily was using Ha Ren for some sneaky plan. So she disappears, leaving Ha Ren alone. But don't worry, Lily comes to the rescue in a flash, saving him from Vivian's attacks. She even threw bricks at Vivian. At that time, Vivian couldn't handle the heat and decided to make a run for it. With the battle over, they continued on their journey to Ha Ren's house. Once they arrived, Lily got her own room to rest up, and boy, was she tired after all that searching. But here's the thing, she asked Ha Ren not to spill the beans about this crazy incident. In the morning, Lily was in the living room when suddenly she let out a big scream. That scared the daylights out of Ha Ren, and you rush over to check on her. Turns out she's actually a dog demon, but what's so funny is, she's afraid of Ha Ren's pet cat, Gun. After calming her down, Lily wanted to watch some news on TV. But oh, bad luck strikes again. The television in the house is broken. So much for catching up on the latest updates. While they were busy trying to fix the TV, guess who showed up? Vivian, the vampire girl from before. She wasted no time and attacked Lily right there in the house. But hold on, her intention wasn't to kidnap Ha Ren. Instead, she asked him to leave because she was planning to have a showdown with Lily. Things got intense. The battle between Vivian and Lily was so fierce that it wrecked the furniture in Ha Ren's house. That's when he got really annoyed and stopped the fight. He asked the two girls to pay up and compensate for all the damage they caused during their epic showdown. Then, when Ha Ren got really angry, both Lily and Vivian quickly said sorry. He was curious why Vivian came to his house, and guess what? She wanted to rent a room just like Lily. While they were chatting, Vivian's stomach made some crazy noises. Haha, <laughs> poor girl was hungry. So Ha Ren, being the nice guy he is, decided to whip up some food for both of them. Soon after, Ha Ren asked Vivian why she chose his place when there are fancier inns around. And you know what she said. The rent here is super cheap. Who doesn't love a good deal, right? Anyway, even though Ha Ren didn't really want to kick them out, he finally agreed to let them rent a room. But oh boy, Lily didn't like the idea of living with Vivian one bit. They started arguing and teasing each other again. Vivian even called Lily a wild dog and that got her all fired up. She slammed the table so hard it shattered. At the same time, Ha Ren got annoyed too and told Lily she had to pay for the broken table. That scared her a bit, but hey, she shouldn't be breaking stuff in the first place. Then, once the situation calmed down, Ha Ren asked Lily to clean up the mess she made while he took Vivian to check out her room. And guess what? Vivian was super happy when she saw the spacious room. But she realized she left her bag outside, so she pulled off this ninja move and climbed out through the bedroom window. Soon after, Vivian came back to her room, but oh no. She discovered her money was gone, replaced by some leaves. At that time, she was upset because she couldn't pay the room rent. But don't worry, Ha Ren felt bad for her and let her stay anyway with the condition that she'll pay when she gets her money. 
Vivian was over the moon and she even offered to be their cook. But Lily wasn't so sure about Vivian's cooking skills. She had her doubts and questioned if Vivian could actually cook. To prove herself, they all went down to the kitchen where Vivian showed off her cooking talents. And guess what? Her food was so yummy that Hao Ren and Lily couldn't stop praising her. Just when they were enjoying the delicious meal, Vivian's phone rang. And Lily, with her dog instincts, grabbed Hao Ren's phone with her mouth. Turns out, Hao Ren got a call from a trading company, asking him for an interview at 2 p.m. that day. But he was all like, no way the interview is too soon and I live far away. But guess what? The caller was super pushy and practically screamed at him to come. He couldn't say no, so he reluctantly agreed to the interview. In a hurry, Ha Ren got ready and took the bus to the address the company gave him. But wait, it gets even weirder. The caller asked him to press his hand against a flyer on a power pole and look around. Shortly after, Ha Ren looked up and saw a building floating in the air. Turns out, that floating building was the trading company that wanted to hire him. But the caller told him to make sure nobody saw him there, so he sneaked to the front gate like a secret agent. The office looked more like a palace than a regular company. Then, as Ha Ren was marveling at the fancy building, a hologram popped up and led him to the admin room. And guess who he met there? A woman named Raven12345. She introduced herself as his boss. But here's the funny part. While Ha Ren was all serious and ready for the interview, Raven was just casually munching on a cup of noodles. Then Ha Ren couldn't help but ask why the place didn't look like a trading company at all. And guess what Raven said? You won't believe this, it's not a trading company. She told him he's in the executive department of the Xiling Empire, and their job is to control the whole universe. And guess what his new role is? He's going to be an assistant in this palace of the gods. He'll be taking care of all kinds of important stuff like making sure some species don't go extinct and dealing with heavenly events. But wait, there's more. Raven took him to this super high-tech control room that overlooks the entire universe. And his first task is to keep the tenants in his house from causing trouble for humans. At that time, Hao Ren was faced with a tough decision after meeting Raven. She offered him this job that could change his life, but if he refused, he'd have his memory of the past two days erased. Then Hao Ren thought about all the stuff that comes with the job, which were salary, health insurance, and whatnot. After some serious thinking, he decided to go for it and sign the job training contract Raven gave him. Back at home, Hao Ren proudly showed off his work contract to Vivian and Lily. But uh oh, they thought his job looked tough and related to demon hunters. Then they chatted about all the buzz about demon hunters in the news lately, but poor Ha Ren couldn't follow their conversation. And then something super weird happened. While Ha Ren was taking a relaxing nap, he had this wild dream where he found himself in a totally strange world. He was walking around when suddenly he ran into a pack of friendly wolves. But just as things got hairy and a wolf was about to pounce, he woke up with a jolt. But he was actually holding a piece of wolf fur in his hand. Now, Ha Ren decided to call over Lily and Vivian to show them this spooky fur. Vivian, being the curious one, started inspecting the feather-like thing, thinking it might be some wicked black magic stuff. But guess what? Nada. No black magic detected. Lily, on the other hand, being the expert on wolf fur, took a whiff and was like, Ah, oh, this ain't regular wolf fur, my friend. Worried for Ha Ren's safety, Vivian handed him some protective amulets. But wait for it. They didn't work. That's right. Not even one of them did the trick. Vivian was like, what's going on? Now things got really interesting. Ha Ren started suspecting Vivian might be a vampire working for a priest. Ooh, drama. But hold up, Vivian's attempts to cast her powerful blood spell totally flopped. The blood just poofed into thin air, and her hypnotic powers paffed. They only made Lily sleepy, not Ha Ren. Oh, and then out of the blue, Raven came calling, meeting Ha Ren for some urgent task. The next day, Ha Ren rolls up to his office all pumped up. But wait, surprise, surprise, the place is eerily quiet like a ghost town. No one to meet, no hustle, no bustle. And guess who shows up? Raven looking all different, wearing gardening clothes and carrying a massive sword like a boss. After a while, Raven finally remembers why she called Ha Ren in and invites him into her room. And guess what's waiting for him inside? A super cool, top secret gadget called John Duan. It's like nothing he's ever seen before. Curious Ha Ren, being the tech-savvy guy he is, asks her how to work it. So Raven explains that this Zhang Duan works by placing it in the palm of your hand and controlling it with your thoughts. How sci-fi is that? And the best part is it can be used to call for help from other planets if there's an emergency. But Raven reveals that if Ha Ren becomes a worker for the gods, yeah, you heard that right, and someday kicks the bucket, his spirit will jump into someone else's body so he can live on forever. At that time, Ha Ren feels a bit weird about all this, it's like someone else is playing puppeteer with his life. 
Soon after, Hao Ren was curious about the work he had to do. And guess what? Raven invited him to this super cool strengthening center. It's where all the newbies like him get special powers for their missions. Talk about leveling up like a video game. But then things got a bit weird. Raven showed him this funky looking coffin and told him to hop in. Yeah, you heard that right. Coffin time. At first, Hao Ren was like, uh, oh, no thanks. But Raven was all persuasive and locked him in there, promising that he'd get some awesome elemental injections to make him super strong. Now imagine the scene. As the coffin spun around, Ha Ren felt like he was getting zapped with electric shocks. Ouch, it was painful and Raven started to wonder if something was off with this whole strengthening process. All of a sudden, whoosh, Ha Ren found himself in the same place where he met that wolf in his dream. But this time, he wasn't alone. Zhang Duan popped up like a boss, ready to help him out. Cold and confused, Ha Ren didn't ask for directions or anything like that. Nah, he wanted a fur coat to keep warm. But guess what? Zhang Duan wasn't too thrilled with the request. He's like, come on, dude. I'm not to Raymond with a magical pocket. I'm just here to guide you and not grant all your wishes. Anyway, Hao Ren followed Zhang Duan's lead and started exploring the place. And you won't believe it. Even though there were tons of scary wolf monsters there before, now they were nowhere to be seen. Soon after, John Duan gave Ha Ren an important reminder. He told him, hey buddy, complete your mission safely in that crazy world. Cause if you don't make it out alive, your real world body will be in trouble too. And guess what? Ha Ren had to act all cool and collected even when faced with super weird stuff he'd never seen in the human world. Imagine that, staying chill when things get bonkers. But here's the funny part. John Duan was kinda tired of flying around all the time. So he made himself comfortable in Ha Ren's pocket. But hold on. Out of the blue, Ha Ren sensed some something sneaky lurking behind the bushes. And yep, you guessed it. Suddenly, a gang of monster wolves jumped out ready to pounce. Quick on his feet, Ha Ren used this nifty shield that magically popped up to protect himself. He fought those wolves like a boss, giving them a taste of their own medicine. But wait, there's more. The wolves weren't going down without a fight. They howled for their leader, gearing up for a real showdown. Meanwhile, on top of this hill, the wolf monsters were causing a ruckus and their big boss, the leader, heard their howls for help. Then he zoomed to the rescue, like a superhero. Ha Ren was like, whoa, this is bad news. So he dashed towards a meadow with the wolf leader hot on his heels. But lucky for Ha Ren, he had this cool body shield that popped up when he was under attack. But turns out the leader of the wolf pack could talk. At that time, Ha Ren was totally stunned by that. And just when he thought it couldn't get any worse, more hungry wolves showed up, including some cute but hungry little pups. But being the smooth talker he is, Ha Ren struck a deal with the wolf leader. He promised to come back to their world if the leader helped him get to a place where regular humans lived. At first, the wolf leader wasn't so sure about Ha Ren's offer, but he took a chance and agreed to help. So off they went. Ha Ren hopped on the leader's back and they journeyed to this cozy little hut Ha Ren was searching for. Once they arrived, the wolf leader bid him farewell, reminding him to keep his promise. Now here comes the fun part. Inside the hut, Ha Ren had a brilliant idea. He used John Duan as a flashlight to brighten things up. But oh, uh, John Duan wasn't too happy about that. He started moving around like a grumpy little guy, refusing to be a flashlight. As if things couldn't get any crazier, Ha Ren tripped and grabbed hold of something mysterious. And boom, a wild hurricane appeared and the hut lit up like a disco party shooting lights into the sky. On the other hand, while Ha Ren's house was bustling with action, Lily was on a mission to rescue an injured dog. She tried to help the poor pup, but it got scared and ran away. As she chased after the runaway doggo, Lily accidentally bumped into this mysterious dude. All quick to apologize, she continued her pursuit of the dog. But wait, something weird happened. Lily is one strong gal, but this guy didn't seem bothered by the bump at all. Meanwhile, back at home, Vivian was on a cleaning spree, using a shiny new vacuum cleaner that made her super happy. She even turned it into a dance party, singing along as she worked her magic. But, hold on. Lily returned with the rescued doggo, only to find Vivian all grumpy about her cleaning time being interrupted. And you can bet they didn't end up just having a friendly chat. The scene shifts back to Raven. At that time, she was waiting for Ha Ren to come back from his mission. And guess what? She was just chilling, slurping on a cup of noodles. And Tada, Ha Ren returned, popping out of that mysterious coffin like a boss. But hold on, he wasn't too happy about being teleported to some random place without any warning. Suddenly, curiosity got the best of him, so Ha Ren asked Raven about that weird new world he just visited. And guess what she said? It's a fantasy world. Anyways, after getting the scoop, Ha Ren said his goodbyes and headed home. 
Oh, but he didn't go empty-handed. He brought back some wolf fur from the fantasy world. But then Raven called him again, and this time she had some exciting news. They're going on a European adventure, baby. She got three plane tickets to England. Turns out they go there, cause they're meeting someone important who's gonna be their new roommate. Sometime later, Hao Ren, Lily, and Vivian hopped on a plane headed for Europe. Lily, being the lucky one with a window seat, was super excited about the view from above. After a few hours of flying, they finally landed in England and started making their way to the hotel following Raven's directions. But hold up, Lily wasn't too thrilled about all the walking. She was like, guys, let's grab a taxi, please. And Vivian, well, she got tired too after they resumed their journey. Now here's the kicker. Ha Ren was worried about the language barrier with the locals, so he asked if Vivian could speak English. And guess what she said? Oh, sure. I've been speaking it for centuries. I say what? That sure confused our boy Ha Ren. But no worries, Vivian had a brilliant idea. She suggested using Lily's super smelling powers to sniff out the hotel they were looking for. At first, Lily wasn't too eager. But when Ha Ren promised there'd be lots of delicious food at the hotel, boom. Lily was on board, running with Vivian to find that sweet hotel spot. Not long after, they finally reached the hotel. But turns out it was a super fancy luxury hotel. They got a huge, beautiful room with the most stylish interior. Vivian, loving all things luxurious and neat, was like, Oh my gosh, this is paradise. Meanwhile, Lily, being the foodie she is, wasted no time and ordered a whole bunch of delicious food. But hold on, Ha Ren wasn't too thrilled with his friends being all distracted. He got a bit angry and reminded them to focus on their tasks given by Raven. Now for the real fun part. Ha Ren asked his buddy Zhang Duan to find info about a place called Yorford. But, oh boy, Zhang Duan was being a grumpy computer and said he couldn't find it because the system wasn't updated. Then he told Ha Ren to update to the latest version first before talking to Raven. And here's a friendly reminder from Zhang Duan. Hey buddy, watch your words about Raven. Don't want to get zapped by her lightning bolt, but guess what? Before Ha Ren could even process that advice, zap, Raven's lightning bolt got him cause he said something not so nice about her. But wait, there's more to this adventure. Vivian took charge, using her bat to check out the area around the hotel. And guess what she found? Something strange lurking nearby. But out of the blue, she bumped into this guy named Samba Nangong, who claimed to be from China. Then after meeting Samba, Vivian, and the others couldn't wait to hear about Yorford. But hold up, it's not your typical happy place. Nope, it's an abandoned spot the creepy castle ruins, spreading over 10 kilometers. And guess what? Samba warned them to be careful cause according to local tales, Yorford is haunted. Later on, Vivian had this wild idea. She felt Samba might be a demon hunter and wanted to prove it to Ha Ren. But hold on, guess who showed up on the balcony? Samba himself. He heard them talking about him and couldn't resist joining in on the fun. With confidence, Samba claimed to be a real demon hunter, but Vivian wasn't convinced that easily. She was like, nah, a true demon hunter wouldn't just blab about it in front of everyone. But here's where it gets interesting. Samba got a bit miffed and tried to prove himself by teleporting to Vivian and the gang's balcony. Thumse didn't quite succeed and nearly took a tumble. But don't worry, Ha ran to the rescue. He rushed to save the day. In the room, Samba tried to prove he's a demon hunter by showing his cool demon hunting spell. And guess what? He totally convinced Ha ran and the gang. They were like, hey, we're in. Soon after, they all agreed to leave bright and early at 6 the next morning for Yorford. And just like that, Samba went back to his room. Now here's where it gets interesting. Ha Ren was curious about why Vivian agreed to go with Samba, and she spilled the beans. She still had her suspicions about him, but she wanted to keep an eye on him just in case. When the morning came, they hopped on a train, headed straight for Yorford. But uh oh, Vivian and Lily were like two feasty cats on that train. Vivian refused to share a seat with Lily, and guess what? As they watched TV on the train, there was a news broadcast about some reporter talking to Angus, sharing all kinds of spooky ghost stories connected to Yorford. Suddenly, the dude they met spilled the beans about Yorford. He said it's an ancient castle that's been in ruins for centuries, and guess what? It's infested with ghosts. But the British government promised a big prize for anyone who can solve the ghost problem there. And guess what? Vivian was all pumped up to go to the castle and win that prize. After a few hours on the train, our gang finally made it to Yorkford Castle area. And hold on to your hats, because guess who they ran into? Angus, the same guy they saw on TV. Turns out, he's the inn's receptionist. At first, Angus was all, sorry, no rooms available. But after seeing how tired they were, he softened up and gave them two bedrooms. Score! And here's where it gets interesting. Angus asked if they were planning to visit the castle ruins and solve the ghost mystery. And guess what? 
Samba, being all confident, introduced himself as a demon hunter. Ooh, fancy title. But that got Angus to reveal his true identity that he's the owner of the hotel. Samba, being the smart guy he is, asked Angus for a map of Yorkford Castle, cause his map didn't have the castle's location. And just like that, Angus invited Samba and Haoren to chat about the story of Yorkford Castle before it turned into ruins. Then after Haoren got all the juicy info from Angus, he rushed to tell Vivian everything. But when Haoren went back to the room he's sharing with Samba, Samba was totally caught off guard. He almost dropped a precious photo of his little sis. Then he explained that not just anyone can see or touch this special photo. It means a lot to him. So night fell and it was time to hit the sack. Sweet dreams, everyone. Meanwhile, Angus was like a busy bee taking guests to see the famous ghost in Yorkford Castle. But hold on. Samba had a little sneaky plan. He secretly watched Angus through his bedroom window with binoculars. At that time, Haoren didn't know any of this until Vivian woke him up with some urgent news. Turns out, Samba snuck out to follow Angus and the other guests to the castle all on his own. Then Vivian told Haoren to hurry and catch up with Samba. Time to wake up Lily and get this adventure back on track. On their way to the castle, Angus made it clear that he preferred to escort two other guests instead of Ha Ren and the gang. At that time, Vivian took charge and flew with Ha Ren to catch up with Angus's car while Lily, being her sleepy self, ran through a shortcut to Yorford Castle. Then when they got to the castle, they saw a bunch of other hotel guests gathering to do some exorcism stuff. But hey, Vivian's got some tricks up her sleeve. She spooked them all out and cleared the castle ruins so they could focus on their mission without any interruptions. With the coast clear, our team entered the creepy ruined castle, which used to be a church, to unravel the ghostly mystery that everyone's been talking about. And there's more. They're also on the lookout for a secret room where the new tenant of the room is hiding. Intriguing. With Zhang Duan lighting their way, they wandered around until they finally found that secret room. Soon after, they kept on walking deeper into the castle, but little did they know, they were in for a surprise. The secret room they stumbled upon was massive, and it totally drained their energy. But wait! What's that sound? Curiosity got the best of them, and they followed the mysterious voice. Suddenly, there was Angus. And guess what? He was all set to steal a treasure hidden in the castle. But suddenly, Lily had a plan. She scared Angus by pretending to be a spooky ghost. And let me tell you, it worked like a charm. Angus took off running like a scaredy cat. Then, once Angus was gone, everyone kept on going, and they found themselves in an alley with strange carved letters that Vivian recognized. Out of curiosity, she touched one of the letters and magic happened. Arrows were suddenly aimed at them. At that time, Haoren quickly activated his protective shield, and they all ran into a room to avoid the arrow traps. But hold on, the adventure is not over yet. Suddenly, a group of knights in shiny armor started chasing them. Lily, being the brave girl she is, faced the knights and even managed to snatch one of their swords. Turns out, these knights were guarding a magic stone, and their job was to protect the seal on it. With knights on their tail, they raced back to a room where they spotted a huge magic stone hanging above them, sealed with a chain. Then while our gang was on their adventure, Samba took a different path into the dungeon. He faced all sorts of tricky traps, but he's one smart cookie. When he sensed some super strong magic power behind a passage, he used his magic paper to blow up the walls, thinking he'd find the magic stones. Oh, but it backfired. The explosion accidentally broke the magic stone seal. Meanwhile, our fearless trio, Haoren, Lily, and Vivian, found themselves surrounded by a bunch of armored knights who appeared after Samba's little wall-blowing mishap. But don't worry, Samba wasn't far away. He came to the rescue with his demon hunter arrows, taking down some of those knights. At that time, Lily was right there too, using her awesome abilities to fight the troops, and Haoren whipped up a magic barrier to shield himself and Vivian. However, Vivian needed some time to awaken her magic power, so Lily did her thing and kept the troops at bay, buying Vivian some time. But oh no, Sama got surrounded too, he ran out of arrows. Poor guy, he fainted after Lily accidentally threw a rock that hit his head. Just when the situation was about to get out of hand, Vivian finished her meditation and unleashed her super duper magic powers. Wham! She took down all the enemies like a boss. But wait, there was still the magic stone hanging from the ceiling and Vivian tried to bring it down. But oh! The stone transformed into a scary demon king named Gudman Yizakisi. Soon after, Yizakisi attacked everyone, and that's when Haoren quickly made a magic shield to protect them all. Yizakisi was pretty annoyed that he couldn't break through the shield, so he decided to kidnap Haoren and Samba instead. But don't worry, Vivian and Lily came to the rescue. They chased after Yizakisi like a whirlwind. Then, when they caught up to him, Vivian demanded that Yizakisi let Haoren and Samba go. And guess what? Surprise of surprise, 
is Ixi called Ha Ren the owner of the house. It turns out, Ha Ren was supposed to be the new tenant renting a room in his own house. How crazy is that? However, poor Ha Ren was scared out of his wits by the Demon King's creepy figure, especially when Yizakisi blasted away the rest of the castle ruins with his mega magic powers. But hey, they had to be careful, because there was an enemy nearby and Ha Ren didn't want to give away their location. So he asked Yizakisi to transform into a human form to blend in. The next day, Ha Ren decided to talk to Raven about this mysterious Yizakisi dude. And boy, Raven spilled the beans. She told him all about this new tenant in Ha Ren's own house. Later that evening, all the tenants, including Yizakisi, gathered for dinner. At that time, Vivian and Lily were in for a surprise when they saw Yizakisi devouring his food like there's no tomorrow and he drowned it all in soy sauce. What a unique way to eat. After his feast, Yizakisi shared his plan to find a job so he could pay his rent to Ha Ren. Turns out, he used to be a businessman, but he had a rough time when his business partner cheated him, and he had to declare bankruptcy. And you know what? Yuzhexi is a real stickler for following rules. As time passed, the house became livelier with Yuzhexi around. Especially when he decided to play mediator between Vivian and Lily, who were having one of their little arguments. The next day, Hao Ren was still half asleep when he met up with Raven. He grumbled and complained about having to wake up so early because Raven had a new assignment for him. But John Duwen quickly reminded him that the task was super important, so he shouldn't be whining too much. As Ha Ren walked through the park, he stumbled upon a girl named Wuyue Nangong strumming her guitar on a bench. Suddenly, Wuyue waved at him, but he was in a hurry to meet Raven and couldn't really wave back properly. Finally, at Raven's office, she told Ha Ren that there was a spaceship issue 895 light years away from Earth, and he needed to pick up a new tenant who was stranded there. Despite his complaints, Ha Ren reluctantly agreed to the mission and asked how he could travel all the way to outer space. Then Raven revealed a cool teleportation room that would do the trick. She mentioned that besides the new tenant from space, there was another one coming to his house. And guess who walked into the room at that moment? It was none other than Wuyue, the girl he saw at the park this morning. To his surprise, Raven explained that Wuyue would be his partner for the mission and her diving skills would come in handy. Then, once Hao Ren and Wuyue knew all about their exciting mission, they headed back home, where Wuyue got to meet the other tenants. She introduced herself as a descendant of Sirens, an ancient race that usually lived in the depths of the ocean. It was fascinating to hear about her non-human background. The next morning, Hao Ren, Wuyue, and Yizakisi gathered outside the house, ready to embark on their mission through the teleportation portal set up by Zhang Duan. With a flash, they found themselves on a spaceship, warmly welcomed by a guide girl. To Hao Ren's surprise, outer space wasn't as bustling with aliens as he had imagined, and the spaceship was surprisingly peaceful. Following the guide, they reached a room where a hologram of Captain appeared, promising to take them to their destination planet at a speedy 10,000 kilometers per hour. At that time, excitement filled the air as the ship took off. But suddenly, they encountered an enemy ship and Captain revved up the ship's speed to chase them down. As they neared their destination, the team received a new order to switch to a smaller plane for a smoother landing. They hopped into the tiny aircraft with Zhang Duan at the controls. But oops, the main plane's door refused to budge. Yizakisi saved the day using his cool demonic powers to push the door open. Phew, a small plane carrying Ha Ren and Wuyue was finally free. As they descended through the planet's atmosphere, they couldn't help but feel overwhelmed by the breathtaking view. But then, oh, uh, their little plane crash landed into the ocean. Panic ensued and Ha Ren found himself struggling underwater, about to lose consciousness. But just in time, Wuyue came to his rescue, swimming like a real siren. In his unconscious state, Hao Ren entered a dream world where wolves were having a fierce battle. Acting bravely, he used his shield to stop the fight, catching the attention of the wolf leader. To their surprise, Hao Ren showed a piece of paper with ancient writing that the wolf leader recognized. But just as the leader was about to explain the meaning of the ancient language, Hao Ren snapped back to reality. Then, once Hao Ren woke up, he and his team kept on trekking through the planet to locate the crashed spaceship and find the new tenant for his house. Thanks to Zhang Duan's help, they reached the crash site, but darn, no one was there. Soon after, Yizakisi tried to rummage through the debris, but still no luck. Then they headed to the second spot where the cargo cabin plunged 5,000 meters deep into the ocean. Without hesitation, Wuyue, being a siren and all, jumped right into the sea. Shortly after, brave Hao Ren volunteered to dive with her. Thankfully, Wuyue used her magic to help him breathe underwater. At that time, they searched and searched until they finally spotted a cargo cabin on the seabed. But guess what? All they found was a single egg in one of the capsules. 
Wei Wei saw it first and showed it to Raven through a hologram connection. And you know what Raven said? They actually found the new tenant. Surprise, it was an egg that hadn't hatched yet. But oh no. In all the excitement, Wei Wei accidentally dropped the egg. Luckily, it didn't crack so few of their mission wasn't a total bust. A little while later, they headed back to the mainland, waiting for another spaceship to pick them up. But guess what? Out of the blue, Raven zoomed in with her own spaceship, the Hybrid Turtle. She totally surprised them. Raven was all like, hey, I gifted this awesome ship to Ha Ren. And let me tell you, Ha Ren was absolutely stoked about the gift. Being the captain, Ha Ren quickly got the ship going with the help of John Duan, who was the ship's pilot. Soon after, they go back to the base of their previous ship. Meanwhile, back at Ha Ren's place, things were a real mess. At that time, Lily had gone haywire, wrecking everything in sight. Vivian had the tiger up to stop her from causing more chaos. When Ha Ren and the gang arrived home and saw the craziness, they knew they had to take Lily to Raven. So they brought Lily to Raven, and after checking her out, Raven explained that Lily was going wild because she was about to evolve. But with Raven's super duper equipment, it could help Lily get back to normal. Then Ha Ren decided to send everyone else home and stay to meet with Raven. That's when Raven spilled the beans, saying she could only slow down Lily's evolution. To really save Lily's life, she needed to go through the whole evolving process. The next day, Ha Ren told the gang about Lily's situation. Vivian, being the awesome friend she is, whipped up some special potions to help Lily with her evolution. They all decided to camp out on the mountain so that Lily could evolve freely when the full moon showed up. That night, everyone was super busy getting things ready, and they ended up passing out while waiting for Lily's transformation. But guess what? Lily felt it coming and couldn't wait. She burst out of the tent and howled like crazy under the full moon. Everyone woke up just in time to see her evolve. But Lily turned into this massive, powerful dog. She lost control and ran towards the city. Turns out Vivian's potion didn't work and Lily was going wild. Thankfully, Wei Wei had this cool siren's song power. She used her enchanting voice to soothe Lily and bring her back to her human form. Crisis averted. Now they could protect the city from Lily's rampage. Meanwhile, there were these two dudes, the Yuan brothers, secretly watching everything. They got some sneaky plans and wanted to use Lily's evolution to their advantage. Then, after bringing Lily back home, Ha Ren tried to put her to sleep, but out of nowhere, those sneaky Yuan brothers showed up and attacked him. They totally knocked him out cold. Next thing you know, they snatched Lily, who's from the same race as them, and took her to some secret place. And get this, they put all sorts of magic around the building, making it impossible for her to escape. When Lily tried to break free, the power of the Yuan brothers' magic sent her flying. And then, guess what? Those tricky brothers appeared, pretending to be her pals. But Lily wasn't buying it. She fought back, but they overpowered her, and she passed out. Turns out, the Yuan brothers were up to no good. They were kidnapping people who were just like them to create a group so they could gain respect from other races. On the other hand, when they got back to Ha Ren's place, he was still knocked out. But don't worry, Yuzekisi and the gang woke him up. And you know what? They asked him where Lily was, and he remembered that he got knocked out by the folks who took her. Then they wasted no time and followed Vivian's cool bat, which led them straight to a steel-making factory where Lily was being held. Shortly after they reached the factory, Ha Ren and Vivian had this epic showdown with one of the Yuan sisters who could shapeshift. At first, things got a bit tricky, but they managed to corner those sneaky Yuan brothers. Now, this is where it gets funny. Yusekisi and Wu Yue went in through another door, and guess what they found? A bunch of factory employees playing Mahjong. At that time, Yusekisi couldn't resist the temptation and decided to join in on the game. The scene shifts back to Ha Ren. At that time, he found himself facing the other Yuan brothers, who were seriously strong. But instead of trying to fight them head-on, he decided to do some fancy footwork and dodge their attacks like a boss. However, John Duan was kinda annoyed, telling Ha Ren to fight and use his newly acquired body strengthening skills to take on the brothers. But Ha Ren wasn't so sure about his fighting abilities. Luckily, he quickly located Lily and asked her to get out of there, but guess what? The Yuan brothers, now half-wolf, showed up again to stop them. Since Ha Ren didn't want a big brawl, he and Vivian tried a different approach. Then they started talking to the brothers to figure out why they kidnapped Lily. Turns out they had it all wrong. The brothers thought Lily was forced to live with Hao Ren, but that was far from the truth. Lily had moved in with him willingly, no strings attached. Then once they cleared up the misunderstanding, they were in the middle of the chat when suddenly, a group of demon hunters surrounded them. But hey, they all joined forces to defend themselves and get out of there safely. In the big showdown, the Yuan brothers got hurt real bad from the demon hunters' attacks. One of them even took a knife hit and got frozen, unable to move. It was getting ugly, and the demon hunters were about to finish them off, but wait for it. 
Ha Ren and Lily swooped in to save the day. Lily used her new awesome powers to scare the demon hunters off and get her buddies to safety. Soon after, they all hid in the forest to catch a breath and one of the Yuan brothers was seriously wounded. But guess what? Our girl Wu Yue, who had joined the team, had some incredible healing powers. She worked her magic and nursed him back to health. But oh no, the leader of the demon hunters wasn't giving up that easily. He showed up for a fight and Yuzakisi wasn't backing down either. He used his amazing strength to melt the knives the demon hunters threw at him. At that time, Yuzakisi tried to reason with the leader, telling him to stop hurting innocent races. But the leader wasn't interested in listening, so Yuzakisi had to teach him a lesson. With just a flick of his finger, he made the leader faint. But wait, the demon hunters were desperate and took Uyue as a hostage. Oh no, Samba, who's always quick on his feet, pretended to be one of them and rescued Uyue, saving the day once again. Meanwhile, as sometime later at Haoren's place, Samba showed up. And boy, was he fired up when he saw the Yuan brothers. He was all ready to throw down with them. But hold up, Yuzakisi stepped in like a peacemaker to stop the fight. And you won't believe this. Suddenly, the Yuan brothers actually knelt down and apologized to Yuzakisi. Then, when they were all trying to figure things out, suddenly the electricity at Ha Ren's house went off. Uh oh, they thought someone might be attacking them again. But guess what? The real reason was that Ha Ren hadn't paid the electricity bill. Oops, no money, no power. So at the end, the tenants found out about Ha Ren's money troubles. But hey, they're a tight knit bunch, and they decided to take matters into their own hands to help him out. Meanwhile, Hao Ren tried to borrow some cash from Raven, but no luck there. When he got back home, he got the biggest surprise. The electricity was back on, and the table was full of delicious food. At that moment, Hao Ren was so astonished, and he asked the gang how all of this happened. And you know what they said. They worked their tails off all day to gather the money for the utility bills and treat everyone to a yummy feast. Everyone was happy, munching on the tasty dishes. But then Hao Ren remembered something. He couldn't find the egg that was supposed to be the new room tenant. But guess what? Wu Yue had put the egg in the kitchen. And who would have thought? Lily was boiling the egg. And that's a wrap. The Dongwe ends with laughter and friendship, showing that when everyone comes together, they can conquer anything. What a fun and heartwarming journey it has been with Hao Ren and his awesome gang of roommates. Until next time. The moral lesson from the Dongwe is never underestimate the power of teamwork and magical friends when it comes to fixing financial woes and cooking eggs.